All right, very good. Make me a blessing. I pray that God not only blesses you, but God makes you a blessing. Greetings and welcome to our live stream. This is our, our Bible study on the, on the Sabbath school topic on the book of Isaiah. And today we're looking at the subject of when your world is falling apart. What an appropriate topic for this time. As I'm speaking here today on January 16th, 2021, just a few minutes from here in downtown Washington, D.C., it looks like a military camp. There are thousands of soldiers under the expectation that uh, some crazy things could happen as they have happened in recent weeks around, around here. And that may be the case, too, for you if you happen to be watching in some other part of the world. And I'm sure you're hearing the news as well. But we're just delighted that you've joined us today. And we want you to participate. This is a panel. I'm about to introduce my friends that are with me today for this wonderful discussion. But you can participate also. Send your comments or answer, answers to the application questions that we're going to be inviting you to share. We, please share your story. We'd love to hear your story. We share lots of stories here. And so we'd love to hear your story as well. And by the way, we do this from week to week. And we have the ability for you to be part of... Um, our conversations, and we, we do a daily reading that is found at this website, SabbathSchoolPersonalMinistries.org. You can read uh, the, there's a daily reading, it takes about five minutes each day or so to read, and you can feed your soul with hope, because here's one thing for sure, when the world is falling apart, you as a person, you don't, you don't have to fall apart, you can remain strong, that, uh, and I believe this has been true for my life, and it can be true for your life too, that through faith, you can overcome fear. And no matter what's going on with the pandemic uh, or with whatever crisis that may be going on in the personal life, finances, and even health, that God is with you. So follow along the daily readings. And by the way, if you're doing that and you would like to be a part of our conversation, you would like to be on our panel one time, uh, even maybe this quarter, between now and March, please send us an email and let us know that you want to be a part of the panel, communications at seabrooksda.org. We'd we'll love to have you be a part of our conversation. So don't hesitate to, to, to come along. And I'll tell you what we can do when the world is falling apart all around us is don't give in to fear. When our world is falling apart all around us, one spiritual skill is gratitude because a grateful heart is a heart that does not give into fear so i'll begin by saying i'm grateful i'm grateful that i have faith today that i know that no matter what happens around me that god is in control i don't need to be afraid i'm grateful for the gift of faith today and i have a few friends that are with us here today and i want you to meet them 
And so here is uh, Gillian, and here is Brittany, and here is Takaya. These beautiful people are here today to share their stories as well. So we'll begin with, uh, with you, Gillian. I will have you share your gratitude today. Hello, hello. Um, I am grateful for the word. Um, I'm grateful for the word because with the word, I'm able to handle everything else in my life at the moment. So at this period of my life, I am very thankful for understanding the word. Very good. All right, Brittany, what about you? I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for family. And I'm grateful for, for being here today. I'm glad you're here. And Takaya, your turn. Um, I'm grateful for waking up another day. <laughs> I love that. Yes, waking up another day. Very good. And so, my friend, I know some of you watching, you're brand new to faith. You're brand new to having a relationship with God. And we're glad that you have chosen to listen today. So one of, one of the things we do is we talk with God. We talk with God as to a friend. And so Gillian is going to lead us now in this opening prayer, just thanking God for being with us. Gillian, would you pray for us? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to share um, this study with the world and, you know, you. We pray that you open up our hearts as we study. We pray that you grant us not just knowledge, but understanding of the knowledge. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Gillian. All right. So. Uh, we have this uh, this incredible topic, and last week, our wonderful moderator, Janine Jarrett, she was talking about how fitting it is uh, that this study on the book of Isaiah was written a long time ago. Of course, the book of Isaiah was written um, centuries and centuries ago, so long ago, 3,000 years ago um, or so, uh, more like 2,700 uh, years, rather. And so when your world is falling apart, uh, that this is how how he feels right now in 2021. And so uh, this study uh, takes us to uh, this scripture. Uh, the scripture in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 2, uh, which uh, basically says that uh, if you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Or stated in the positive, if you believe, Surely you will be established. So there is trouble all around, and yet another power that has that is stronger than you joins forces with yet another to wage war against you. What could you do? And the Bible story this week from Isaiah 7, Ahaz is that's the name of the guy we're studying uh, his story this week and today. His world is about to fall apart. So he needed a powerful ally to overcome his dangerous situation. And so dangerous times, these were dangerous times, is also what we are facing uh, today as well. So uh, let me have you look at this scripture right here from Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 2. And uh, Brittany, would you read it for us? Sure. And it was told to the house of David, saying, Syria's forces are deployed in Ephraim. So his heart and his heart of, the, of his people were moved as the tree of the woods are moved with the wind. Isaiah 7, verse 2. All right, so there's a, big, there's a bit of poetic language here. So let's, let's look at what's going on here. All right, so here's what's happening. You have this guy, his name is Ahaz, and he is the person in charge of the country, the country of Judah. And so there are two other countries that have come together for the purpose of fighting against Judah and taking them over, putting another king over them. And actually the idea of the, the northern kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Syria, now it can be a bit, a bit confusing because we have the kingdom of Syria, and then we have also the kingdom of Assyria. And those are two different things and two different groups of people. So the kingdom of Syria and Israel, that's the northern kingdom also, they come together and they're going to go fight the kingdom of the south. It was called the kingdom of Judah. 
But they're doing that out of fear too, out of fear for the kingdom of Assyria that is taking over everybody. This was the time when there was this war, like it's been the history of, of humanity, of uh, the battle for power, for material things, for strength, for, for military strength. And that's what they were after now. Syria and the, the northern kingdom of, Ju of Israel, they wanted to now take over Judah so that then they could have more soldiers for the army so that then they could de defend themselves or hope to fight the kingdom of Assyria that was taking over everybody and making people slaves and all that. It was a crazy time to be alive. Um, indeed, it was. And so, um, if I put myself into Ahaz's shoes, you know, my kingdom is weak and yet another kingdom that is stronger than your than than mine joins forces with a um uh, uh, to then fight against me what can i do when everything is coming against me when it looks like everyone all around me whether it's your family members your co-workers they seem to be coming together for the purpose of hurting you maybe someone can relate to that here today so the war and trouble was not only raging externally, and it was. You can imagine that there was also a war raging within. Ahaz had committed serious crimes. So um, the trouble was then that you know how it goes. Well, maybe you do. When things are not going well, and on top of things not going well, you're thinking to yourself, and this is all my fault. If I had if I had not done that, then this would not be happening to me. So I have a question for all of you, and I love to hear your answers in the chat. Here's the question. Um, it's a question that probably was in the mind of Ahaz as he thought about all these troubles coming to him because of his own choices. By the way, it has happened to be one of the worst kings that that country ever had. Um, just made really poor choices, just full of self, so much so that he was willing to hurt his own family uh, to to get what he wanted. So uh, we don't want to talk too much about other people because it's easy to point fingers, but let's turn it inward right now because the point here is we want to know how to live our lives when it seems like the world is falling apart so here's the question were you ever in danger and you thought you had brought the problems on yourself that's the question did you ever put yourself in a situation a problem that when you reflected on you thought oh man i did this to myself so i'd love to hear your answers please send them in the chat and let's hear, let's hear from Gillian. Would you share? Yes, yes. Okay, well, a situation where I would say I brought it on myself. Um, as much as I want to justify this story, um, I will start from the part where I would say the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, no matter what happened before. Um, I had a situation, I had um, a problem with someone and I've come to realize that I have anger issues, you know. Um, so I just happened to defend myself in front of the police. I call it defending myself, you know. Um, the Holy Spirit told me not to, but I was so justified in my mind that my instant reaction was to punch this person in front of the police. So, of course, they take me away. You know, I'm at the police station. And there is that voice. The Holy Spirit told you not to. The Holy Spirit told you not to. So I became stubborn and I told myself, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Should I start praying now? Should I say, oh, I'm sorry? I knew I really wasn't sorry. So asking God for an apology at the moment just seemed very fake to me. So I just decided, okay, I'm going to be quiet. I will go through this. I went, but God is so amazing because why at the police station? They happen to be two girls and two women in the room and one of the women i'm playing tough girl at the moment you know one of the women are just crying 
she's an ex Navy um, lady. She used to be in the Navy. So she's just crying. Her life has fallen apart. You know, her family is disappointed, this, this. And I'm on that corner. I'm playing tough girl. The Holy Spirit said, comfort her. I said, no, I'm not talking. You know, there was a third woman in the room too. She was quiet. Make a long story short, this girl continued to cry. And I was forced now to pray with her, you know. So while I'm praying with her, God is working on my heart, working on my heart. Um, after dealing with her, I end up saying, okay, Lord, I guess you wanted me to talk to you, even though I was speaking for someone else. I kind of spoke to him and said, please let me get out. I will never do this again. I was um, released. I always thank God I didn't make it to the jail itself. I end up at the police station, which is still jail, you know, in my mind. Um, so the way God worked in that story, of course, I got myself there. But I find that story amazing because later on that week, I went to work um, at a nursing home away from my house. I happened to meet the third woman that was in the cell with us. And she happened to be the director of nursing, you know. So with her um, seeing the way I acted, you know, I guess she thought I was this nice, calm Christian lady because I prayed for the woman. So being at work, that God used that situation, not only for me to testify to that woman, outside of that prison, I was considered that Christian girl at work and she just looked at me in a different light. So I got myself in that mess. God got me out of it. And at the same time, he used my mess to testify of his goodness. So that's it. Mm. That, thank you, thank you, Gillian, for sharing. And you know, when it comes to to growing in our character, it, how do we overcome our character defects? Gillian just said, uh, you know, just, she said that she can't realize that she has anger problems. I think a lot of us can relate to that. But here's the point: I cannot grow out of my character defects unless I admit that I have some, right? And so that's that's the beginning. By the way, that's something that the person in the story from Isaiah 7 did not do. Ahaz, he did not do. For admitting that one has flaws, that takes courage and also called humility at times. All right, let me uh, uh, invite uh, Takaya to share her story on this topic. Well, um, I would say a time where I brought danger upon myself, but God still brought me out of it was when I was in ninth grade. It was, I had an altercation where um, it was multiple people and I was jumped. But, and I would say, at first when I was in it, I would say, oh no, I had no, it wasn't me. Like I didn't put myself in that situation. I had no idea. But then now I'm thinking about it, the people that you hang around. And even though I might have not known, the fact that I knew, like, the people that I hang around could be in that situation, and I'm included with them. So um, it could have went the wrong way. I could have been hurt worse than I was, but God really, and it was a lesson learned, never happened again. So I thank God for that, yeah. Mm, all right. All right. Thank you for sharing uh, on that, Takai. I really appreciate that. All right, friends, so the next part of our study that we're going to get to, so we, we just looked at dangerous times. And during dangerous times, um, it's not a good idea to try to take care of things ourselves. We need, a, we need a higher power. We need the power of God to help us through that. And, uh, and to see that so many times, those dangerous times, not every time I met, but sometimes, we've brought them upon ourselves. Um, uh, not every time, but sometimes, and even for some many times. So what is the solution? The solution from our study is um, to believe, believe to be established. And here is that scripture. Let's have uh, Brittany read the passage for us. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Isaiah 7 verse 9. Hmm. So these were the words from the prophet to Ahaz who did not want to believe. And so that's why it was stated in the negative. Because, of course, the, the same text is saying that when we believe, we will be established. That means we will be liberated. That means we will be strong. That means we don't have to be afraid when trouble comes. But we know that we're going to be okay. 
oh, there's, there's examples of this are abundant. So, so why did God let Judah, this kingdom of Judah, led by this King Ahaz, go through so many troubles? Okay, so you saw, and we already talked about this, two enemies come, one enemy is bad enough. But then when two armies come together to fight against you, then things get a lot worse. Ahaz took his self-reliance to the extreme. He was the first king of Judah to sacrifice his own son to the idols. And God led all those difficulties happen, uh, you can imagine. Uh, sometimes we have to taste um, incomprehensible demoralization in order to turn to God. It's when we have hit our bottom many times that we say enough is enough. I need to change course. I need God in my life. Uh, the issue is, the fact is, not, sometimes even the worst of troubles, that doesn't bring people back. So what's going on here? Well, we have, uh, we have Ahaz uh, being visited by a messenger from God and that messenger from God, his name was Isaiah. He's the uh, prophet who wrote the book that carries the, his name, Isaiah. Um, and so he visited Ahaz along with his son. And his son has had an interesting name, Shir Deshub, which in Hebrew means a remnant shall return. Interesting name. And he gave the king a message of hope and begged him to trust God's power. In other words, he came to say, look, there is hope. There's trouble all around, but don't fear. There's hope. You're going to make it through this. A remnant shall return. That could have been a remnant right there and then, or as it turned out to be, it had to be for the future because this man chose his own way, the way of self-centeredness, the way of self-promotion, and so uh, things did not go well for him. They did not end up well for him. Uh, there may be some parallels that are going on in your mind as we think about American politics. Those dangerous kings was the message from the prophet, Pekah and Rezin, the kings of Syria and Judah. The message was they were, they were just like smoke, vanishing smoke for God. If Ahaz trusted God, his kingdom would stand. He would be saved if he would just trust in God. So that was what the prophet said. Look, your problems can become nothing. They seem unsurmountable, but your problems could become nothing. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever uh, had God turn your big problems into nothing? into smoke. I love to hear your stories. Please send them in the chat. Tell us of a time when your problems became nothing because of God. And Gillian, you want to tell a story about that? Yes. Um, yes. So I would say right now at this point in my life again, it can be so many things I can talk about, but you know, trusting in God and his word, he has made that into nothing. But I'll give a specific situation. Um, one thing that I really desire was the success for my business. Um, I started my, I always I started my business with great intentions. You know, the Holy Spirit is leading. I should do it this way. I'm going to help. I will not be corrupt. I will fix every mess I have seen in the healthcare field. I thought I was going to be different. But in the process of business, a lot of things came along the way that, I mean, to make, you know, I got corrupt, like I got corrupt. My my intention, you know, focus, my, I just wanted to make money. I just wanted to make a lot of money. And I noticed that I started doing what the culture was doing, little things that seem normal to society, which in my mind, I know for sure it was wrong because the Holy Spirit told me. Um, my business was very important to me. I had one situation where, um, I would say a worker, a worker, I had a worker at a client's house and she became very, what I thought was boastful. And I guess my thoughts took my kindness for granted. 
So I decided to show her who the boss was, you know. Um, instead of being that humble buzz that I had claimed I was gonna be, I decided to take another worker to this client's house and train the worker <laughs> on this person's position without even telling them what was going on. You know, I guess I, I was exercising my authority. But as time went on, not only did my pride get in the way, I noticed that pride got in the way in a lot of other areas and I was compromising other areas. I was changing God, I was changing myself. So um, let's say things got really, really bad. It got really bad for me. Um, it got to a point that the Holy Spirit was telling me, look, you need to put your business on hold. You need to put your business on hold. And in my mind is like, no, I can't. I need this business. I need to succeed. My daughter's going to college. I started coming up with all these reasons why I need to be in business. But God said, no, put it on hold right now. Put it on hold right now. I remember going to church one day and Pastor Johnson had made a sermon. It was in the book of Daniel about the king that, you know, God had raised to reach nation and all the different things. And he became prideful and God said, cut everything down and believe the roots. So that story played a big part in my life because I felt like God had cut everything down, but he left the roots. And the root to me was my license. So even at that point, number one, I would say my license and number two, my true desire to really care for people. So um, God cut everything down, the roots was involved. So yes, I had to put the business on hold, put everything on the side, um, accept the fact that I have failed, which I thank God for my daughter because she made a statement one day, mom, you didn't fail. You're just starting over with more experience, you know. But God used Pastor Johnson to talk to me. God used my daughter to talk to me. And he just opened up my spiritual eyes to my mistakes. And he allowed my roots to remain. And I had to go back and read a book of Proverbs. You know, that that um, book was such a big deal because it's like Proverbs before action. Why didn't you read this before you went out in the world, you know? But make a long story short, he turned my mess in that place, you know, I guess into a message that is saving my soul and would reinstall my, I call it my, you know, passion at his perfect timing. That's all. Yeah, thank you for sharing, uh, Gillian. So, so not only, uh, not only, they got turned the problems and, and make them, you know, into smoke to, to be as nothing. But uh, it, it happened through grace because you described how, um, similar to the previous story, some of these problems you brought upon yourself. <laughs> yeah. And and so so this this is who God is. No matter, mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, yeah, that reminds me of Romans 5, 8, where it says, this is how God shows his love for people, for you. Mm -hmm. And that, while we are messing around, while we are sinning, God sent his son Jesus to die for us. It was, not, it was not for saints, but for sinners. So praise God. Thank you for sharing powerful, powerful story. So uh, in that, uh, here's a comment that comes uh, from uh, Joyce Hammond. Despite Ahaz's wickedness, his choices, God in his infinite love sent his prophet Isaiah to let him know that the door of mercy was still open if he would surrender to God. Praise God for that. Thank you so much. And I see you, I see your comments, everybody. Thank you for sharing. Just wonderful, wonderful. All right. So um, so that is uh, that is this this part of our study. And now we get into something fascinating that doesn't happen in the Bible often. But it's actually where a messenger of God tells a person to ask for a sign. Take a look at this. It's just incredible. God asked the person, hey, do you want me to give you a sign that I really am for you, that I really am going to help you? If you would just have faith. Okay, what can I do so that you will have faith? This is basically what's going on here. So take a look at this. Um, let's see. Brittany, can you read it for us? Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But as Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Isaiah 7, verse 11 through 12. Don't let the poetic language here cause you to miss the point, uh, my friends. 
So the prophet says to Ahaz, look, you're not believing, but okay, do you need a sign? What what sign would you like? So if you want to say uh, the, the word here, Sheol, which is the tomb, or right? sometimes sometimes trans translated hell. That is the translation sometimes for this word. Ask for a sign. Is it from down below, from the tombs, from the darkness, from hell even, <laughs> basically? Um, or is it from the highest heights, from heaven? What would you like? Um, but he has said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. And that on the surface sounds like, oh, he's being reverent. He's being respectful. But that's not what's going on here. He was being rebellious. It's like, I don't believe and I don't care to believe. So, uh, God's power was at the disposal of this stubborn man. Um, I've been a stubborn man, so I'm not going to be too hard on Ahaz. So, the point was, ask for anything you want me to do. God was willing to give Ahaz anything he asked, because he wanted to light his heart with faith, so that he would return to him. Imagine what, kid, what he could have asked. Well, the, the problem was he was scared, right? He was scared stiff that two armies from two countries were going to come against him. His enemies were coming. They were going to get hurt. Um, you know, uh, Takaya, you, you shared earlier how in your story that situation where you got jumped, right? I mean, that's scary stuff. When people come against you, that's what he's dealing with. He's dealing with um, just war coming towards him. You remember the story of Elijah and his helper and how there was this army and uh, to defend them and God asked for the eyes of Elisha to be open, to be able to see. Uh, brother, it was Elisha. It was Elisha who asked God to open the eyes of his servant to see the armies that, that uh the armies of heaven that were there to defend them. Ahaz could have could have asked for the same thing, could have asked for God to deliver him, asked for anything, but uh, he chose not to. He closed the doors of his heart to faith. Because faith, many times, my friend, is a choice, a choice that we get to make. So since Ahaz rejected God, Isaiah stopped. And when you read this, up to this point, Isaiah, the prophet was saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. And now as they continue to talk after he refuses to, to have, uh, you know, he refuses to pray the simple prayer, God, I believe, help my unbelief. Remember that prayer from one of Jesus' interactions with this man? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. He refused to give God a chance at all. And so from now on, instead of Isaiah speaking to him about your God, Isaiah now started to talk to him about Isaiah speaking, my God. Obviously, you don't have a God, so I can't talk to you about your God, but this is my God. So the king of Judah rejected God, but God did not reject his people. So we get here to our next question. I love everybody to please send your answers. Let me ask you this. Um, and I know that some of you have, others of you haven't, and this is different for, for each person. So let me ask everybody watching, please share, because if you have a story of a supernatural sign, a revelation from God, that story might just be the thing that helps a person make the choice to trust and to believe. So if God has done something like that for you, please share it with others um, so that they will encourage them to live a life of faith. And so who wants to, uh, who wants to share here? Brittany? Yes. All right, great. Go for it. I will never forget this supernatural moment in my life. I was only 11 years old when in Jamaica when I was going to the library or coming from the library with my friends. So they decided to run ahead of me. I decided to follow them a couple minutes later on. Out of nowhere, a dog started running me down. And, you know, you've seen videos on YouTube of children being mauled by dogs. So, you know, 11 years old, I'm trying to run away from this dog with all my might. And all of a sudden, I looked around. And did you know, a, a little stone 
flipped up from my shoes and hit the dog right in the center of his head and immediately the dog stopped running wow it reminded me of david and goliath some way somehow but i'm just telling you i was i love that i love that i was so grateful because i could have been bitten and worse you know so i'm just very grateful for how it turned out so you saw that you saw that in and i hear you i hear you it can be so frightening you have a huge mm -hmm. vicious dog mm -hmm. I, I have a I have a couple of dogs nearby where I live that uh, when we walk by there, they look like they could kill you. Uh -huh. um, but uh, so I can, I, I can see what you mean. I mean, it's so scary. You're a little girl, this huge dog is going to kill you. And, uh, and God uses your shoe as uh, David's, what was that thing called? The sling. His sling. <laughs> and uh, took care of, uh, Goliath. And then you went and you found out the dog's name was Goliath, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, thank you for sharing that story. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, so here we go. People are excited. Praise the living God. And I believe, the, uh, Vic Cooper says, I believe that I receive signs from God in the form of dreams. Oh, wow. I love to hear some of those. My sister, praise God. Um, all right. So let me, uh, let me get a story here from Victoria. She wrote, I asked for a sign from the Lord. He surely sent one in, dead, in the dead of winter. No sunshine. It was a blizzard. I looked out the car window. What do I see? I see people wearing the color pink. When I saw that, I knew, my, uh, I knew in my heart the Lord was with me. Wow, thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you for sharing. Uh, praise God. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm looking at your comments, everybody. Keep sending them, keep sending them, because uh, lots of people are reading them. Wow, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, do, we have, uh, do we have anyone else that wants to speak on this, on this question? And uh, let's see. Gillian, did you want to share on this? A sign from God. Okay, I guess I'll go back again to my business because that's like my baby. I hold it dear to my heart, apart from Kaya. Um, with the business, I had to let things go for the moment. You know, I was trying to put little pieces together, but I realized the more I tried to put the pieces together, the more things fall apart. So one day I just cry out to God and I'm like, okay, Lord, you want me to stop? I'm going to stop. So I had to close my doors and you know, I had to put everything away. So another day, um, no, so it got to a point in my life that I had considered myself not great at making decisions. So I just started praying. Um, I just started praying, God, you know, bless me. You know what's best for me. I don't even know who I am anymore. And everything that I think I desire, obviously, is not good for me. I don't know if that was pride talking or humbleness. I'm not sure. But I was trusting him to make decisions for me. And I was trusting him with, you know, my next move. So one day um, I was praying with my cousin and I remember just adding to the bottom of the prayer. We were actually praying for other family members. So I just added to the bottom of prayer and God, if you want me to be on hold, can you at least send something for me to do that I love? I don't want to do anything that I don't love. I don't want to work anywhere for the sake of money. I want my soul to be fulfilled. So there is a lady that I always, um, a less fortunate lady, she's in She's a homeless lady um, by New Curtain somewhere. So I always hang out with her. I will go spend time with her, holiday with her, sit and eat with her. So this one day I'm driving past um, after that request morning. I'm driving past and some guy is with this lady on the side of the street. So I just put my double signal and I stop at the light and I'm watching. And the guy is wondering, like, who are you? So I said, is she okay? He said, yes. I said, um, okay. But something said, don't leave. I just stayed there and I put my double signal. So the guy's wondering, is she going to go? So I, I put the window down again. Oh, don't worry. She's my friend. I'm talking. I'm just watching them. And he said, well, if she's your friend, come over here and talk to her. So I said, sure. I think this was on Christmas Day, as a matter of fact. So I pulled over and I was talking. I helped the guy talk to the lady. The guy happened to be from the state of Maryland. And it was his job to go around making sure the homeless people are okay and they have everything they need. 
So some things they just asked, how could I help? You know, because to me, I was already doing that. It would have been nice if it would, someone with a group. So he just happened to say, oh, here, we just hired a lot of people and they didn't show up. Um, he, he said, with this kind of job, I almost want to say you have a passion for, you need to have a passion or a calling for it. So I said, I like doing it. So he gave me his card um, and he gave me the, he, I guess he spoke to the director the director of the whole place, you know, then um, about me. So when I called the guy, he said, call the director, I called the director. And the funny thing is I I forgot the guy that I, I met. I forgot his name. So while talking to the director, he has no idea who I'm speaking of, but he remember who I was because that guy spoke to him about me. He was happy to hear from me. He wanted me to send him my resume. They needed a bachelor's degree, which I didn't have. But, you know, my resume and everything I've been doing for the community qualified me. So that was a sign from God. Even though I had I had my sacred desire in the back of my heart, I didn't even feel um, I should even ask God anymore. But he wanted me to know that he has not forgotten my business. He has not forgotten my desire to care for people. And the, the sign was right there on the side of the road. So to me, that was a sign from him. <laughs> Wow, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. A sign from God. And I see that we're almost out of time here. So uh, as, we, as, we, as we keep on reading, we see that because it has refused to ask for a sign and the power of God to be revealed, um, the prophet said, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. You don't want a sign? I'll give you a sign anyway. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. And of course, we go on reading, and the name is Emmanuel. God is with us. Um, that is what you shall call um, uh, this this sign, Emmanuel. And so, as we get into to close here, uh, and there's so much more that we could have said on this point, uh, but the point is, this important is this: that God is with us. There's not more important sign than that that no matter what's going on, God is with us. But then that begs a question, when the world is falling apart. Maybe your world is falling apart right now where you are. So if God is with us, why then do we suffer if God is with us? Let's see, who wants to speak to that? Um, I'll say something. <laughs> Well, I've come to realize that um, my, I'll make this as simple as possible. I've come to realize that my personal desires are the least of God's worry when it comes to my salvation. I've come to realize that in my bank account, just my health, a lot of things are the least of God's worry. I mean, we have to think about it. God sent his son to come die. I don't think he came to die for me to just have all these pleasurable things, you know, so um, God is with us. I realize that because everything that he promised, he promised me a roof over my head, I have it. He promised me food to eat, I have it. He promised me support. It might not be from the people that I want, but someone is always there, which I call him. You know, I have that. He also promised me that he was going to grant me the fruits of the spirit, patience, long suffering, all those other things. And I realized that in the process of my suffering, not only does he protect me, he works in, in, in me to produce the fruits of the Spirit. So he is very here with us, all with me. Mm, amen. Amen. All right. And because our time is basically expired now, I'd like to ask uh, Takaya to, to share with us uh, this. How did you come to realize that God is with you? Um, well, I would say that God uses, for me personally, he uses people in my life to show that he's with me. Like, I know, like, as of right now in my life, I'm kind of, I'm 18 and I'm about to go to college. So I'm just kind of like trying to, I'm in a weird part of like my life. Like I'm ready to start it, but I'm still a kid. I'm still living with my mom. So things are just like, and I'm ready and I'm, I'm a kid kinesthetic learner so like I like to do things hands-on I want to try them for myself 
and not very much like I don't like when people tell me, oh, this is not going to work out. I want to see if it's going to work out for myself. So I end up sometimes going the wrong way. But God shows that he kind of like tells me I love you. Yes, um, you're my child and all that stuff through my mom, through my grandma, just through family and even little people around me. He shows that he tells me like I just feel as if he's telling me that even though sometimes in the moment I don't like it, I don't want to hear it from other people. But later on, I come in and realize that, OK, God, you're talking to me. You're telling me you still love me. You're still with me that I need to go on the right path so that. Yeah. So that's how. Mm, thank you so much. Um, so if your world is falling apart, hold on to God, trust God. Takaya, would you have a closing prayer for us? Yeah. Lord, thank you for this um, Sabbath school. Thank you for allowing us to be able to know that no matter what, you're still with us, whether our world is falling apart and it might not seem like it, you're still with us, God. I pray for homeless, sick, and the poor, everyone out there. I pray for our hearts. I pray that you um, heal them, Lord. I pray that as we go through the rest of the Sabbath, you give us a peace of mind. Let us rest in you, Lord, and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. God bless you. And we're going to restart our, our next service um, where we want to strengthen your faith. In just a few minutes, maybe about 10 or so minutes, we will begin the other, the other broadcast with our worship service today. It's going to be powerful. Pastor Natalie Roberts will be preaching. You don't want to miss that. And uh, so God bless you. Refresh your browser if you're watching on YouTube particularly, and take care. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.